Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce. I am joined with two of my dearest friends. It's been a crazy few months. You guys haven't been on the channel in a while because holy shit, if it's if it's not if it's not raining, it's storming, right? So there's been a lot <laughs> going on. Just how us humans like it, right? We we came here to have the excitement of being human. So first of all, Emmy and Holly, how are you ladies doing? I'll let you go first, Holly. Okay. It's been, like you said, a roller coaster ride. Seems every other day something huge happens, and then one day to recoup, and then the next day it's, you know, just constant. So, tons of upgrades, tons of information, pieces to the puzzle, just amazing um, evolvement of my my soul and my journey and my purpose just tons of awakening and um new services came about with that new skills came about with that and so it's 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 been joyful but um hiring a two <laughs> but i but i love it that's that is definitely why i'm here so i bet i'm just like come on just bring it on come on you know, I want everything done yesterday, <laughs> as I'm sure you both know. Our, we are impatient as humans. <laughs> we are. How about you, Emmy? How's how's life going for you? Oh man, I had to take a pause from everything. I uh, hi, I'm crawling out of my rock. I'm Patrick Starfish. Okay. <laughs> no, seriously. Um. The last three to four months have probably been the most intense um, deepest and life-changing purging and healing and integration that I have had thus far since starting to wake up in 2015 and 16. And I think that all of the all of the healing and the processes that led up to this was preparation for that. And although I wanted to continue and, and I still um, provide Reiki sessions and I still do Reiki the last three, four months um, I've only, I've, I've not advertised. I've not put myself out there. I've not only people who come to me and ask for a session, I'll do a session with the rest of the time has been focused on me and helping the people in my family i'd love to be able to give details but this stuff is so big and so important for humanity and there are so many people stuck in ego thought system that if i were to share this stuff it would not be received do you, do you know what i'm talking about like you have to you have to share in a way that people can understand and and receive so that <clears throat> you can be like a stepping stone in the spiritual growth. So I'm still processing and integrating. Um, a week ago, <laughs> a week ago Thursday, um, I had such an intense purging, both physically and emotionally. It was just as or more intense than giving birth and i i use that correlation because the waves of intensity of emotion and physical sensation would reach this culmination point where you're like in transition in birth and you and you reach this utter sheer state of panic like i can't do this you know it it, it was it i don't know how to describe it if you've given birth without pain medication, you know what I'm talking about. It's like that. And it just kept happening over and over and over. And I just kept allowing it. And had I not had the experience of the years up to that point, I would have done everything I possibly could to avoid, escape, bypass, whatever. Um, but yeah, it it's it's been absolutely amazing and incredible. And the revelations that have come through since then, one of them 
literally lumped me on the floor in a sobbing mess of remembrance and tears. And it's just so exciting. So exciting. Um, I feel really raw and vulnerable, like, like a bandaid was ripped off, like my whole being. <laughs> so that's the gist for me. Lots and lots of limiting beliefs released. Um, I, I wish I could give all the details. I, I wish that everybody would be open and receptive, but you know. It's hard. I think it's hard too, because, and I actually, as you were saying that, Emmy, I pulled something up on my phone. Um, there's a guy named Jeff Brown, and I've spoken about, he did a documentary called Carmageddon, um, which I'll watch every few years. And it's about, you know, his relationship with Bhagavan Das and all this kind of stuff and things that we do. You're right, Emmy, on the spiritual path. Even though we think we're on the spiritual path, we're still trying to avoid the spiritual path. And so I'm going to read you the last monologue that he says in this like two hour documentary. And guys, I'll link the documentary down in the description box below. It's beautiful. He says, there was a spiritual lesson in all of this, but not the one I expected. I too was a spiritual bypasser, turning to God as an escape from my unresolved pain body, looking for spirituality out there rather than here in my real life, in my embodied experience. The truth is I couldn't be here now because I was still in the then, the power of then. And now I know why I was so attracted to ungrounded ideas of spirituality. After my childhood, I needed spirituality that kept me from feeling what lay below the surface. It felt easier to believe that I could ask the universe for what I wanted and it would manifest. And by pretending it was all good, it would make it good even if it wasn't. I was confuting self-avoidance with enlightenment. My repressed emotions are not illusions to detach from. They're actually unresolved spiritual lessons, a karmic field for my soul's expansion. If I want to grow in my relationship to God, I have to drop right back down into my body, raise the feelings from their grave, and do the real work to heal my heart. Spirituality lives inside of our bones and not in our effort to escape them. Here is where we heal. There is nowhere to go, just here. And again, that's Jeff Brown from Carmageddon. And that is actually the first yoga sutras is now the study of yoga begins. And people often miss, miss it gets a little lost in translation, right? They think, oh, it's just starting the sutras. Now it begins. No, Patanjali is saying now it be every day. It's always beginning now. It's every day. It's a now. It's in this moment. It's now it's beginning. And I love that. I actually, what you were saying, Emmy, about it. It's like, I do think a lot of times, I'm sure Holly, you get this too. A lot of times people try to escape the reality of the pain they're in by, by dropping into, I like that where he said he was confu uh, confusing self-avoidance for enlightenment instead of, you know, and using God as an escape and in order to fi actually find God to actually drop into your body and, and lean into that unresolved pain. And that's what that's where God lives. That's where the healing begins. I just thought it was so beautiful when you were saying that. That reminded me a lot of what he wrote at the end of that that uh, documentary. So, yeah, that yeah. was beautiful. I just that was so beautiful. It, it just the. I was throughout this whole process I, I kept giving been given the words the only way out is through the only way out is through the only way out is through and it's like when I would get to those points of sheer and utter panic you know it would last sometimes for a split second to 30 seconds to a minute and then I would find that place of acceptance okay the only way I was through and then I just allow and then birth whatever the fuck I was purging um, I cried so hard. My eyes swelled shut and I got a migraine the next day. Like, it, I mean, I got a migraine that night, but it lasted all the whole next day. And then, um, the day after that, I felt amazing. And <laughs> I was joking with some of my, uh, spiritual friends. I'm like, I think my reward for, Allowing that to happen is increased spidey senses because I was like smelling things and like hearing things that nobody else was hearing. And I'm just like, I wonder if I can, I, I, I joked around with my daughter and I went like this. 
<laughs> no, I don't have no string. <laughs> Holy sister, Holy Spirit, activate! <laughs> it's not working. <laughs> um, no, that's so. I mean, that I think that's you know. I think too. As I think one thing that's important when when you feel that coming up, that obstacle coming up, that causes. I think a lot of people feel like in order to face the pain. In order to lean into what's happening, they have to not feel emotional about it. But no, actually leaning into it, you're going to have those days of crying in the corner and having them that is actually facing. And I think that's what he was saying by avoiding you, you. I think people try to lean into like, say you go through a breakup or something and it's devastating and you're leaning into the breakup by saying it's OK, it's OK, it's going to be OK. It's all in God's timing. But that's actually avoiding the reality of the pain that happened and to actually allow yourself that time to mourn and to feel the anger, to feel the the fear, what, the rejection, the betrayal, whatever it is you're feeling and, and exercise it out of you in order to then release. It's not, you know, feeling the pain doesn't mean that you're avoiding the reality of the situation. You're actually living in it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, indeed. And also, too, like, depending on a person's energy, there are different ways that you can release and purge emotion. Like, for me, it's crying. I'm a very watery person. Some people, it could be um, yelling into a pillow or punching a punching bag or going for a run or whatever, just as long as you're allowing yourself to feel the emotion and move the energy out of you in some way without trying to go around it or, or stop it or make it feel better or make it less intense. Like if, if you're able to lean into it, and, and feel it a little more, like, like just open yourself up and just feel it a little more. It fucking sucks. Okay. But as soon as you become willing, as soon as you have just the littlest amount of willingness to do that, like the floodgates open and it's over before you, you're, you're even like, there's just such a state of fear and panic with emotional intensity. Like we're so afraid of our emotions for the longest time in my life, I wouldn't allow myself to feel my emotions because I had this really illogical fear that I thought they would kill me. <laughs> well, they hurt, right? They hurt. And they hurt, just like touching fire hurts, just like tripping over a rock hurts you know it's it's um it's why kids are afraid to go to the doctor because they don't want to you know it hurts to get get that needle put in you it hurts you know so it's like you know that pain especially when you're you know a grown-up you've experienced heartache before and you're like no 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 like you don't want to you know it's that natural i think that survival instinct to not because pain equals death, right? Pain is in our eyes is the is the is the road to death and the nervous system, right? When like when we we learn not to touch fire because our nerves feel it and we react and it tells our brain don't touch the fire anymore because that that fire burns and that will kill you. And so I think there is that subconscious like fear that the pain of heartache, the pain or of whatever, even the ego death there's that subconscious fear of actual death. Does that make sense? Especially because right. the soul is con the soul is always at peace. The soul is is constantly in a state of, of 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 observing and being at peace. It's the mind of the avatar that then comes in conflict with that because the avatar is what's mortal, whereas the soul is immortal. Right? Does that make sense? The avatar. I'm going to add to that's also based in your um, inner child. That's their natural response. Yeah. Yeah. That, you know, that, I think that's why too, I, um, I, I know that, um, I'll hold on one second, guys. I'm trying to, there we go. <laughs> Bryce is the director. Isn't that great? As I work the, um, yeah, I, that's why I think every time I do Kuan Yin's, uh, Sophia code that, that hits me so hard. Um, and I think for me and for a lot of people who are massively affected, it's the wounds of the child that there are still, there's still, and that's, co that's complicated, isn't it? Because a lot of trauma, a lot of pain from childhood, it's not so black and white. There's complexity there. And so it's, it's okay. I think we have to get, I, one of my favorite um, sayings is two things get to be true. 
it's okay to like love your parents and understand they did the best job they could, but also acknowledge that there might have been some abuse and there might have been some com complicated traumas going on. I, you know, I, I, I think, um, you know, it, I, I think as kids too, that's we see our parents for a long time as like superheroes who can do no wrong. And then the reality sets in that they're not, they're just human beings trying to figure it out. So it's okay to like love someone, but also be hurt by them at the same time. And to, you know, that's all, but it's a hard road to walk, isn't it? Where do you see this, Holly? Like, how does this, this speak to you with people and their childhood traumas? Well, one thing that's, um, <clears throat> well, over the years anyways, um, brought to my awareness and I think is also uh, for we we light bearers and, and um, healers is that we're not only here to heal all those inner child traumas of this lifetime, but every soul fractal you have ever incarnated into has an inner child as well that needs healing. We are to heal all of them. And it is multi-layered. And it is difficult. And and in my case, I have healed. Um, I discovered I had two. I had a cosmic inner child that that held all the energies of all my cosmic um, inner children in one female little girl. And then I had my human self, my human one, um, that I had abandoned and didn't know I did. Uh, from when my um, my uh, walk-in came in when I was four years old. She was abandoned at my grandmother's house across every time. And she sat in the backyard under the willow tree waiting for me all these decades and the anger, <laughs> Lord, that's a story in itself. So there was at one point when I discovered that, I actually held the souls of both in me. And they didn't like each other. You know, the one that was abandoned who need healing, she was just all like, like this, you know. And the cosmic one, she was all healed already. I'd already worked on, on her and she was a little bossy and... So I remember having, you know, I was having other, you know, incoming, you know, and I couldn't deal with the squabbling and the poking and, you know, the cosmic one to my, my current inner child. I literally called on my divine feminine and divine masculine to come and babysit. Take them here. I'm busy. Take them. <laughs> and they did. They, they played babysitter <laughs> so I could do what I had to do. But, um, everything is is just so I, I have to say everything we'll ever do as an adult is completely rooted in not what standing emotional and uh, otherwise that your divine uh inner child you know the state of your inner child you know everything as an adult every emotion every action every thought is really based in the well-being of that inner child it affects everything. And until that is healed and integrated, um, it just wreaks havoc. <laughs> there's another one thing I've been thinking a lot about too, and I would love to hear y'all's perspective on this. You know, I'm, I'm myself, I'm a, as I mean, we've talked about this a lot, a student of the law of one. And I've been thinking a lot about the role of the wanderer, which I think both of you ladies are, I've been told I probably am. And this is not, when I say what we're wanderers, I'm not saying we're better. I want that to be very clear. We're all in third density, like we're all here. But a wanderer, according to the law of one, is a soul. We can call it an old soul. We can call it, you know, a higher density soul that volunteered like idiots <laughs> to come to earth, um, you know, to, to come down at this time. And just even though we knew we were going through amnesia, just to hold that vibration. Now when we look at the polarity of, of darkness and light, we see um, the darkness can see the wanderers. They know who the one, even though we don't know. And so there's a lot of things that situations that wanderers get themselves in that 
can be more intense than the average person. But also, I think some of the trauma, I've, I've thought about this a lot as well within my own childhood. I think some of the trauma, the childhood trauma comes from the fact that you're usually born to parents who are not wanderers. They might be high, high density souls, but they're not wanderers. And so even though your parents in a lot of ways as a human being teach you how to speak, how to feed yourself, how to tie your shoes, they have that authority. They have the authority to protect your physical body. There's a lack of understanding as to, to who you are and to what you actually know. And I know a lot of, of wanderers struggle with um, fitting in with the matrix. Like a lot of wanderers will live very different lives compared to, they're not bad. They're not doing bad things, obviously. They're just not following the beaten path of the, maybe their friends because it doesn't resonate with them, right? It doesn't, it's just something doesn't feel right and they don't know why. And then sometimes that can, oh, I have that too right here. I mean, the wanderers handbook. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this We're situation good. is so intense that somebody had to write a damn handbook <laughs> <laughs> you know and I think for me as a kid you know my parents I, I look my sister you know she she was very happy and content to do what she was supposed to do and you know she's got three beautiful children and there was never like that deep longing of of questioning what is this you know but I think when you are coming from a, a, another place nothing really feels comfortable for you does that make like this is a very dense reality to be in and so your body doesn't feel right things don't really make sense in a subtle they make sense in your brain but not in the subtlety of of the spirit that lives within your your bones and i think that in itself can be trauma to not feel understood and to not really understand yourself either does that, does that make sense like to forgive your parents for not knowing you didn't know either that you you were not going to be living the lives that that your your siblings are going to live or you know you might be viewed as the more difficult child but it's because you are you know wanderers are typically high level in, empaths and i have there's a great youtube channel um called hg tutor have you ladies heard of hg tutor he terrifies me i'm just going to put that out there he is a self-aware psychopath ultra narcissist and it's very informative to listen to his videos um, because he, it's not his real name, he doesn't give his real identity, but he explains the thought patterns of psychopaths and narcissists. It's very different from the way, and on the, on the other end of that, you have the empaths. So in the middle, you have what he calls the normals. And a narcissist or a psychopath which the Cassiopeians law of one call organic portals because they don't really have a soul because they don't have that. They have to steal from, from you. They have to feed off the, you know, you're a light being there, the light eater. And they don't want normals. Normals are not, you know, that's like junk food. Like empaths are the sirloin steak, right? Or whatever fancy. I don't, I'm not, I don't eat meat, so I don't know what the fancy steak is, but, but you know, we're like the juice, like we give them the most nutrients. And so a lot of empaths will have psychopathic narcissists. And the problem with empaths is that we think everyone is thinking like we're thinking. You know, when the narcissist shows us their mask, we think that that's genuine, that they're literally, but they only, they're only playing that to entrap you. And it's just very fascinating. And I don't know if you girls have anything you want to say on that, but that's also trauma too, when you realize you're targeted by these people. Oh, definitely. My, <clears throat> my husband of 25 years was one of those. <laughs> and it was the whole meeting was orchestrated. I, I wrote a little eight page short story about the whole occurrence when I finally got all the pieces put together. Um, <clears throat> but um, yeah, he is the reptilian forces under the guise of religion and angels instigated the whole meeting the whole coming together that it it they ensnared me in, in the guise of religion and it was anyway so that's happily all over <laughs> no more energy sucking <laughs> anymore 
Well, and isn't that like, and I, and I hope, I, I know every time you ladies come on, we get such positive feedback because I think this just helps people understand, you know, if you're feeling these things, like you're, you're not alone and yes. you're not crazy. No, you know? they're and, so, it's so in depth though. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> like my, <clears throat> because of the whole process, I went through all those years and then the realization of what was really going on, um, led to my one service, the, the psychic uncoupling. And there's so many of us awakened that are, are either their mates or family members or sisters or friends or, you know, whomever the narcissists are in their life, <clears throat> that there's the, the importance of um, removing all those um, energetic cords, you know, their, their feeding tube. Yeah. Basically. I, that's literally uh, that what it is. Crossed it's all timelines and all nows because the chances are if you were with one now, you have had previous incarnations with them that also need um, removing. <clears throat> so it's completely doable because <laughs> I've done it. Yeah. By the time the divorce was final, I was so calm. I had like no reaction at all. That was only the last little piece was the, le the legal bit, you know, and that was all good. It was amazing. Oh, <clears throat> and one more thing, kind of going back to, to what you said a little bit ago about um, kind of religion and God and the connection and how, how going outside of ourselves. <clears throat> Recently, I found myself without thinking, you know, I was fussing over something and I said, Okay, Creator, Mother, Father, God, I need da da. And I was trying to connect, and the energy literally went up this golden cord. I could see it, it just stopped me. It went up, and then it just made a U turn and came right back into here. Like, why are you reaching outside of yourself? The God you seek is right here. And that's never happened. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, duh. You know, <laughs> it was just old, an old habit, you know. So <clears throat> that's really important to do that. And uh, one of the lovely ways of doing that is shamanic journey or a guided shaman shamanic journey that's all over YouTube. And that is a beautiful way where you're really proactive and, uh, you know, you're not just sitting back snoozing through it. You know, you're actually participating. And uh, that is a lovely way also to connect to your creator and all your other piece, pieces and parts. I love, and that's, as you're saying that, I was thinking, you know, this whole battle on earth between the darkness and the light, the friction, the opposing forces, you know, one side is of wholeness and the other side is mm -hmm. of incomplete, right? And it's interesting and when you're at, at a dawn to me because we know religions are all created to control. And again, I want to reiterate a religion, religion and God are not the same thing, right? It's not the same thing. So isn't it clever how these like psychopaths throughout history have taught us and ingrained in us that it is something outside of us so that we don't, don't, well, don't reflect on ourselves so that they can continue to feed off of that fear, off of that vulnerability um, when Yeshua and all these real, the real teachers of all the Vedic test, texts, they're all their thing, their whole thing, the commonality between all of them are, it's you, boo. You are the savior you seek. You are the fractal of light. The last time, lovely Emmy, I'm so blessed that she's near me, came over and we did and worked with each other. There was this mind you know, it's a simple concept, but it meant so much, you know, concerning <clears throat> vulnerability. And then the Pleiadians came through and said, you, you, we um, need to realize that we are creator beings and we were never um, really at risk. We're that powerful. And, and when we, is what they said. In, in, yes that we Wonderful. need to continue to say to ourselves until we finally believe it, that we are invulnerable to anything and everything that is not for our highest good. And I've, and when I first started saying that the dark side would come in and I'd like come up with every other word, but that one, I almost wrote it in my palm because they would make you forget, Yeah, you know, 
it was in everything else except for that word. <laughs> so literally had to write it down, <laughs> you know. But um, it made such a huge difference. And thank you. Thank you so much, Emmy. You were just amazing things when we come together, I tell you. But I, I have been passing that around. This, this simple phrase makes all the difference in your mindset. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and it, you literally are taking back your power. And, yeah. and like reigniting it again. Yeah. And that's why I, as you're saying that I'm thinking about like the bigger picture of what we're going through right now. And I've been very frustrated because a lot of people who, you know, are seekers like us or in the quote unquote truth or community or whatever are still looking for something outside of themselves to come save them, you know, for the white hats to save them for someone to do it for them. And, and I will say what you're saying too. Um, and the Cassiopeians have said this as well as HG Tudor said this too, and he doesn't quote the Cassiopeians, but they mirror each other. In regards to organic portals or people who are, you know, uh, psychopaths or narcissists, once they don't have the food supply, meaning us, to give them that sense of self, they basically will just disintegrate because there's no life force to keep them going. HD Tudor said the same thing. Um, Doug, who was on my channel on Thursday, who does videos with him, said that he had asked them, like, you know, when we learn how to put our boundaries up and we learn how to stand in our sense of self. What happens to the narcissist and the psychopath and HG Tudor just said, we vanish because we can't, we can't. And isn't that an indicator of the healing though, too? Like once the vibrational match doesn't magnetize towards that, it can't exist. I remember my ex-husband saying, once I woke up and my frequency shifted, which naturally was bringing me away from his frequency that he was used to feeding on. I remember him saying whenever he would get, well, not necessarily too near, but uh, too near, but when I would speak divine wisdom and the frequency within it would make his stomach hurt, would make him nauseous, nauseous or nauseated, me speaking truth. And then it got to the point where he just couldn't be near me or hear anything I had to say because it made him sick. Because of the frequency shift, me going up and him being down here and I, you know, the oil and water <laughs> started. I have a little bit different perspective. Um, I have experience, many, many years experience with uh, narcissism. And <clears throat> while going through it and afterward in the healing process, um, <clears throat> I was very much looking at things um, through the lens of duality. Like there are two powers. There's good and there's evil. But I don't believe that anymore. I believe there is one power and that's God's loving will. And all the darkness and evil you see is the misuse and misunderstanding of the I am power. I also believe that nothing has come to me in my life unbidden. I've asked for it. And I am incredibly grateful to take radical ownership and responsibility. And I am so grateful for the training I had with the narcissist that I was with. Because without that training, I would have gaslit the fuck out of myself during this awakening. I would not be where I am today. I have done so much forgiveness work. Forgiveness is salvation. It is your freedom. I love this man with all my heart. Not going to tell him. Not going to say it to my husband. But I am so grateful to my ex-husband for what I learned. In that relationship he got me where i am and i love him for that dearly I, I i have no ill will for any narcissist any psychopath any evil person because they have gotten you where you are right now and you can do and you can forgive them and you can be free and you can teach other people to do the same thing 
And I've said that about my ex too, that almost killed me one night that if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be, um, be where I am today too. Cause that's what, that's what triggered a lot of my, for my real deep work, um, back in my early thirties with a trauma therapist. And it's what, it's what ca it catapulted. It, it has no choice when you're dealing with something like that there, you have no choice, but to either sink or swim. And it, it for me, it catapulted. And I will say, and that's when, um, after that, I went through that and started to really, and I will say that about this, that was the first time I was really introduced into childhood work. Um, because when I had my trauma therapist and I thought we were just going to work on my ex, like the relationship there, we never even talked about him. We went right back to my childhood, to my dad. And that's where we started and that's where we stayed. And you're right. I will say that too. I mean, I, I don't feel anything towards my ex actually anymore. I don't, I have, I'm told, like you were Holly, just very neutral. I don't want him in my life, but like, I don't care if he sinks or swims. I'm just very neutral. Um, and, and starting to realize, I think that's the hardest thing too. And that's what I've noticed too, with a lot, cause I know a lot of our viewers too, have also had struggled with narcissists and stuff like that. And I think, um, we, we have a lack, I think, generally speaking, when abuse isn't physical and sometimes it's both, like sometimes you get it both, but when if we put the physical aside, that's easy to spot, right? Like getting hit is easy to spot what that is. But when you're you're being conditioned or groomed or going through, like you said, Emmy, like you would have get started gaslighting yourself if you hadn't been exposed to such an extreme version of it. Most people don't even understand that they're being gaslight lit when they are being, you know, they, they, that's why they call it manipulation, right? You don't know you're being manipulated. And so the wires get so crossed in your head that when you're pushed to the point to actually look back and understand, you know, for me, I've realized there's so many things that I do that aren't necessarily who I am, but are trauma responses, like, like shades of my personality that are trauma responses. Um, I, 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 Teal Swan, there was like a clip that she, like a 30 second clip she did that I thought was, was she nailed it on, on the head where she talked about the uh, child that is ha ha with a dysregulated adult. So if there is a guardian, a parent, whoever in your life, uh, you know, as a child, as a young child, like under the age of 10, we absolutely are aware as children that we need our parents. We need our guardians to stay alive. We know that we, to, to provide the house, to provide the food, we know that when dad's upset, the whole house runs and hides. Like we understand, we start to understand that interdynamic relationship between our providers and us who are tr truly dependent upon these people. And so when a child is in a situation where there is a dysregulated adult, uh, meaning adult that's, that's, I don't not, not, doesn't necessarily have to be narcissistic or borderline, but a, a, an adult that they have to walk on eggshells around they have a, a heightened tuned in awareness. It's like a subconscious awareness to, to pick up at that antenna of that person. And then the child does everything the child can to try to regulate that adult. So they start the fawning process. They start, you know, really trying to regulate that adult because in that moment they, they need to, because that's their source of life is that adult. But what happens is that these things are so subtle and they're learned in such an early part of our lives that when we become adults um, and we have the ability to walk away from an abuser or walk away, we don't because we've been trained to find that dysregulated adult and try to regulate the situation. And I thought that was fascinating. Like kids that don't grow up and this has nothing to do with whether your parents were wealthy or poor. It's, it's whether they were able to provide you with unconditional love that you knew you were going to be safe. Right. And, um, and so when we have a, a child who grew up with regulated parents, when they're adults, they walk into a room and there's a person that they've picked up on isn't, isn't so regulated. They're just like, fuck that person. I'm not even going to pay it, you know. But us that did not grow up that way will then go fawn that person to try to regulate the situation. And to even just to be aware that that's where, I mean, in that moment when I heard that 30 second clip, I was like, that, I, I was like a light bulb moment. It was like, there it is. Okay. So now I can go back and observe another pattern that I have. And now the people pleaser pattern, the, and now, and that's what that is, right? That's the trying to regulate something that you feel like needs to be, that gives you that stress 
you know, and it's, and it's too, a lot of it, I think as well. One of my, I have, I have so many favorite sayings, but one of mine is the devil, you know, is better than the devil. You don't know. A lot of times we get so conditioned to be comfortable. We know we don't, we're not comfortable, but we know it. We know, we know that narcissist, we know the way this works. And so we know how to play this game, even though we hate it, we know it. And so I think a lot of times, in fact, what you were saying at the beginning and me with that quote, and I see this in the yoga shawl a lot, people want to change, but when that change starts to approach, they don't know what that change is going to, going to be. It's uncharted territory. So they pull back into the familiar, mm -hmm. right? And even just to recognize you're doing that, because so many people don't even, it's so subconscious and subtle that they don't even recognize that that's what's happening. But to be able to observe yourself in these patterns and how you respond to things, we often think, oh, that's just my personality. It might not be. It might not be your genuine personality. It might be a, 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 a survival, a trauma response that you learned as a child. And part of that childhood healing is to go back and make that little girl or that little boy feel like they are safe and they're they're going to be okay. Does that make sense? Mom? Speaking of <laughs> childhood, <laughs> right, right on cue. That was right on cue. That was awesome. That was like a God wink. <laughs> Thank you, Bryce. I, I know all of us that really have to, um, just so many, so many layers of healing. Just, it seems never ending actually, but they just, so people listening to this, you know, it may be really kind of hectic right now but it does slow down you know the the episodes and and these the need to to heal it does spread out and get farther you know till we get to that space of of balance like emmy's beautiful um uh interpretation of of learning and and when we balance our our light and dark and and realize that creator created them both and that they they do hold love what they do is in love it's just their frequency of love and not ours their focus it's it's the the same energy and in, in reverse it's still creation energy and uh, when when we embrace both sides and heal everything on both sides, then we truly become the master that we are, and we're balanced in the center. You know, like like all the ascended masters have have accomplished. <clears throat> so thank you, Emmy. That was very poignant and perfect. <laughs> That's why it's the law of one, right? It all comes back. And I know because Emmy's also a student of the law of one. And Rob oh, talks yeah. about the negative. He's very indifferent, right? They're very yeah. indifferent. They're like mm -hmm. Yeah. The, the, okay. So I found this one, one spot. I'm going to have to go look it up again. And as I was reading, I was told, and I quote, so basically all the negative side can do is talk shit. That's all they can do to you. They can do nothing to you except mess with your mind and get you to think and believe and attract what they're offering. All they can do is attempt to, I'm videoing, you're going to be on TV. <laughs> Go ahead, honey, walk through. Um, I lost my train of thought. Sorry, we're doing a big 21st oh, birthday party here today for my son. So I have awesome. my whole house is full of people. Like, I can't believe I've only had William in here a couple of times, honestly. I, can I just side note? I can't believe you're, you don't look like you're old enough to have a 21 year old. So I'm just going to put that. I know. You know what's funny? Uh -huh. Somebody confused me for, a, for one of my children's siblings. Like, they thought I was their sibling. You're like, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hey, you know what? I want to go back to my last thought. I forgot what it was. I'm going to ask you guys what I was talking about, but I wanted to share this. We're projecting everything that we see. And this has been proven last year. The um, 
Nobel Prize winners were these three physicists that were able to prove that local reality doesn't exist. And what that means is that, you know, the old adage um, if a, or the old question, if a tree falls in the woods and there's no one there to hear it, does it make a sound? They were able to prove not only does it not make a sound, it's not even there. Reality renders when it's perceived by our eyes. So our body's senses are perceiving exactly what our minds are projecting. So we're projecting this body. So I don't have to project old. <laughs> Y'all remember that book? I think my mom got it in like the 90s. It said, think yourself thin. Seriously. And I'm going to be 47 in a couple months. Well, I still well, wear bikinis. Oh, girl, keep wearing them. <laughs> but it's what, you know, Sean Stone, uh, Oliver Stone's son, when he was on my show, he um he talked about this. He did a whole series and he he kind of and I, I'm, I'm paraphrasing it. He did a much better job saying this. You guys just watch his stuff. But he talks about how when you're in the magic of movie making, right? When the director is, I don't know if you guys ever seen um, film from Hollywood before it's been edited and cut. It's boring. It's like nothing. So the director and the editor are the ones that are creating the shots. They're creating the reality for you to perceive that consciousness to feel those emotions. Now we know what Emmy's saying is true because that's what they do with um, collective consciousness as well, right? They have us perceive something in a way. So collectively we create, we create that energy and yeah, that's, that is absolutely. Yeah. And, and, but it's so, and that's, what's so hard though. That's so if people are watching going, Oh my God, the unattainable unicorn, how can I like fix this? That's, this is the, the unsolvable riddle because we are so attracted. We all, we are so in life, you know, in this life, in our bodies and our nervous systems. And we have been taught certain things that have been so ingrained in us that it's hard to break, to break through of that, that understanding that you are creating your reality. Mm -hmm. We're all just witches and warlocks. We're all just witches and warlocks <laughs> creating our own reality. What was I talking about? Because I really want to finish that thought. And I can't how remember. Shit talk us. How, how, how all they can do is shit talk. Yeah, there was, there was something else. Holly, do you remember? I'm thinking. It was on the tip of my tongue. You were going to go get something oh. to read? It's, um, something about... Oh gosh, it's gone now. They're okay. they're making us for Oh, I, I know another thing I wanted to say. When Holly and I did that session and the Pleiadians were saying about invulnerability, mm -hmm. uh, what they said before that is mm -hmm. this that I just remembered. Okay, so hold on. Defenselessness is your greatest strength because you are invulnerable. And if you're identifying with anything but the I am, you are making yourself something that you're not. Okay, there we go. That's what they said. Write that down. <laughs> <laughs> and you yeah. know, uh, the Course in, Mir Course in Miracles says a lot of the same things. There's a lot of information in the Course in Miracles about defenselessness. And I didn't really like, like it was resonating, but it just, it's, it's not the same when you're given a download it's not the same reading something out of a book as when you're you're given something from the spiritual realm directly it's not the same but yeah. when they when they gave that to me it like hit like it like it's like oh, yeah, yeah okay. got it mm -hmm. yeah that was that was a, that was a cool session that was like so many different uh being showed up all at the same time and they were all excited like i'm literally like one at a time please oh they were all talking at the same time and you couldn't understand them and i remember that now that was that was a life-changing day for me it oh, really what was, was the other thing about cleanliness <gasps> okay so, oh oh yeah yeah okay Drop. go um, ahead okay so hoarding and extreme cleanliness are two extremes of a trauma response. Like clutter, I, I've got clutter. I have 
organized piles of clutter everywhere. Th this room is like the only room that's organized. <laughs> so I'm kind of in the middle. But they were saying that that hoarding and also extreme cleanliness are two two extremes of a trauma response. Oh, absolutely. We say that with eating disorders too. So somebody who is obese and somebody who is anorexic, it's it's both they're both they're both in a sickness that's a trauma response. Mm -hmm. They've just played themselves out in different ways. It's finding that middle ground. And you're right, because I mean I have the propensity to be OCD with with cleanliness. And um when I live by myself, I this is kind of embarrassing to talk about, but like my closet was a walk-in closet and I would me measure between the hangers certain amount of space between each hanger in the closet. I, um, I would, I, I mean, I still fold my underwear, you know, I will get on the hands and knees and like scrub underneath tables. And it is, it's a trauma response. It's totally what it is. I mean, I'm aware of that. I know that's what it is, but even OCD works itself out in weird things. Like I have this weird one OCD. And this is one thing I'm going to say to people too, if you're feeling overwhelmed, just take one thing and work on it at a time. Like you're not expected to like, as has Holly's just said, it's like, it's a never ending road. You know, when you're done, that's when you leave. Right. So, so, you know, don't, don't, uh, don't expect perfection before, before, but it's one of the things that I'm really trying to work on with, um, with myself, with my OCD. So the laundry, I do this weird thing and I don't know where it came from, but it is a trauma response where when I do laundry and I exercise all the time, so I'm, I'm used to sweating, but I don't feel like I'm, I can put any dirty clothes into the hamper unless the first outfit to go in the hamper is covered in sweat and really gross after I've done the laundry. So, but because I'm OCD about cleanliness, it's not like I'm just going to pile clothes before the basket. So I'm going to go out and get really sweaty so that I can put, it's a very weird. And you can, you guys see the crazy in the way that I'm speaking about it? Like in my head, it makes sense. But when you speak it out loud, you're like, this is really irrational i had this really yeah irrational. i have yeah. similar thing yeah it's and i and, and thank you for being so raw and vulnerable with that because people need real life experiences from people that they watch mm -hmm. like you know i i try to be real and authentic and vulnerable i've cried on camera umpteen times if it's annoying to you then don't watch me i don't give a fuck you know and it people need that I need that. I need to see, I don't want to see some plastic perfect face on the TV going, you know, this is what you do. This is what you do. And then they never share any of their struggle. Come on. No, I need, yeah. I need yeah. that. You, you're not real to me if you don't share. So thank you. Well, and I think I know, and I don't know, maybe this is being a little too vulnerable, but I think I do. And I'll give people just a clue. I think I know why I'm OCD with cleanliness and why I do some of the weird things I do. So I grew up in a, a very um, wealthy environment. My, I came from a very, both my parents' families were very prominent, very nice house, had very nice things. Um, but there was a lot of tension between my mom and my dad. And I only knew this like later on when my mother would kind of talk about it. Like she would try to piss my dad off sometimes by like leaving the dishes in the sink. Even though we had a housekeeper are like not putting like taking her shoes off in the living room and leaving them, you know, because my dad, I think he kind of expected her to always have the house perfect, right? But he was always at work anyway. So I think that there was like, as the emp empathic child, I obviously picked up on that dysregulation before I knew I heard my mother say it. These are just petty things, like petty things that they were doing to each other. And so I think picking up, even though my parents never really openly fought in front of my sister and me ever, they kept that I could children still psychically pick up that something's wrong between mom and dad, right? The, the providers. And so that has that, I believe that's what's translated into me. I mean, when I, again, when I live by myself, there wasn't an ounce of dust. I had pictures and everything perfectly set everywhere in the house. I had the throw pillows perfectly placed every day. And I think that's where that comes from. Now, I'm also Vata. So that also feeds into it with the dosha, the energetic dosha. But, um, you know, and that's one thing that's really good about living with someone else. I mean, my boyfriend's very clean, but he's like, it's it's okay if you, you know, leave your shoes outside for the night. It's no, Nothing's going to happen. But it's that 
that connection to the dysregulation between my parents that I now does that makes sense. So it's 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 silly, right? It's so when you speak it out loud, you're like, this is freaking silly. The dysregulation with my parents had nothing to do with our house, right? It was so much deeper. But as a child, that's what I interpreted it as, and that's what it turned into um, with me being an adult. How I express my own home. It filtered through me that it's way. A filter, yeah. We we form filters as children, and we we keep those filters into adulthood. You know, I I had a similar filter, only we grew up in poverty, and when you grow up in poverty you are surviving. And so cleanliness of the house is a very, very low standard because who's got time to fucking clean the house when you're trying to survive? And so that was the standard that I grew up in. And um, so I I really tried, because I attached my self-worth and my value to the um, condition of my house as I grew up into a an adult. And if the house was messy, I would just be an utter shambles as far as like my self-esteem. And I, I still have issues with it. You know, I'm a, I'm a very busy person. My house is not perfect. It's clean. It's picked up. There's piles of clutter. But when it gets, when I'm really busy and it gets messy, like if things need to be swept, there is this constant like ball of stress in my chest until I can get time to get the broom and sweep it up. And, and, you know, I'm working through that. It's a filter. It's a childhood filter. That's all it is. It's not who I am. It's something that I've attached, mistakenly attached my value and self-worth to. And because it's been used and utilized and strengthened for 46 years, it's going to take a little time to undo. <laughs> you know what I mean? So be patient. Be patient with yourself. Be patient. You know what I'm thinking too, as you ladies, I don't know if you guys know this, but in our signal group, which both of you ladies are admins for, our our friends in that group have took it taken it upon themselves to restart the 30 day and 60 day challenges we did. They did it on, they started it and they just, it's amazing. Some people are doing the 30 days, some people are doing the 60 day, but they're doing it co to help each other really get, get going. And if you guys are watching, which I'm sure you are, as Emmy's saying this, I kind of have this like, what if you just sat down tonight or whenever you have the time and just kind of journal about these like quirky little personality traits that you, you have, like these weird little things you do you know, um, that, that you think just is kind of your part of your quirkiness, like me having to put dirty clothes, really, really dirty clothes in first, or the world's going to combust. I don't know, you know, like, you know, that, and then going and then having just kind of processing that for a moment and asking yourself, like, is this really who I am? Or is this something I'm doing? Because my, my, the little girl in me or the little boy in me is trying to regulate something that it doesn't even matter, right? Like, does does that make sense? Like, you know, and of course, if it if it gets overwhelming, reach out to Emmy, reach out to Holly, have them talk you through it if something starts to come, you know, and, and how clever, I wanna say this, like even though as adults, we're like, God, this is ridiculous, but let's step back for a moment. Let's look at this from a different way. How clever of your little, your little child, of that four-year-old, that five-year-old little kid, how clever of that little kid to pick up and perceive that. Look how smart you were at four and five years old. Look how much gumption you had at four and five years old to take responsibility. And if the situation was scary, you were gonna you were gonna be the big big person to manage it. Like instead of like beating yourself up over these little things that you do, like look at that four and five year old kid that you, you know, that maybe didn't even know how to tie your own shoes, but you picked up on the fact that something was wrong between mom and dad or that something was, and you, you took it upon yourself to help regulate it. Mm -hmm. And now you can let that little child rest because that little child doesn't need to regulate it anymore. Now the grown ups here. So don't beat yourself up. Like if anything, it just shows you how smart you are 
you know, from a child's perspective, because kids don't, you know, even if you're a thousand year old soul, your brain, your four year old brain doesn't understand the complexities of a romantic relationship or, you know, the, the, the it's, you know, so that's what that's how it interpreted to that four year old and how clever of that little four year old. Right. So so don't beat yourself up because that just shows you how smart and how how astute you were at such a young age. And now, and now you don't have to, you can let that four-year-old go play with GI Joe's now or Barbie's now. They don't, that four or five-year-old doesn't have to worry about that anymore. So if that makes sense, it makes me a little emotional. I know. And, um, I have a signal support group too, and, um, it's called the B4 Federation. There's a story behind it. Um, and just recently, I think it was just this week, uh, they were uh, on this exact same subject they started to let their inner children come out and play, to play the games, to, to play outside, to roll around in the dirt, to, as an adult, they literally just like, what do you want to do? Let's go do it, you know, to their inner child. And they're, they're digging into the old games they used to play and they were talking about it and just all the fun stuff they really didn't get to do much of. They're now reliving through their inner child and, and just feeling that uh, unbridled joy uh, come through as like, Oh my gosh, there was so, and um, it's it just uh, amazing to see the, the transformations. And I think that is a, a, one of the steps we can do as adults Um is to connect with our our inner child and children and see ask them you know what what can we do together what would you like to do today how would you like to play you know and and it's going to bring you're you're just gonna it'll change your perception because you're going to see through their eyes there you're going to see the world around you through their eyes once again and, and be that um that beautiful little open soul that's before the traumas, you know, that's, that's the big goal is to become that self before any of the traumas were, you know, set that the pureness, cause we're all born pure in the beginning. So that's the goal is to get back to that pureness of our, our soul and the playfulness and, and the joy and, and the big things and the little things and but anyways i just wanted to share that's what they were doing and it, it was just beautiful to hear the responses that their inner children that they felt through them so that's a that must explain why i've been wanting to buy roller blades lately like i've been really wanting to get a pair of roller blades or, or skates and i don't know where it's coming from but i love that it's, i love being able to and of course we come from the generation where we could we could gallivant around the neighborhood on our skates and our parents didn't you know now i think it's different for children but that's awesome i, I as you're saying that holly too i was remember so as a child i hated board games like i did not like board games i did never wanted i was too had too much energy i wanted to, to just move but my dad's mom found a game that she she was very i i have to give her a lot of credit she's not here anymore but I, I, looking back, I think out of all of my guard guardians, she was the one that was the most attuned. She was also a therapist and she was also pretty spiritual herself, but she brought home to her house one day when I was staying with them, a game of clue, the game of clue. And I sat at their 70s styled yellow table, <laughs> very set. Their house is very seventies and played clue with her for hours. I loved it. And to have, and to look at that, looking back on that, as much as dysregulation as there was in all of our lives, like to, to really pinpoint those adults that would do things like that, that that figured you out, that were so high, were so attuned to you, and looking at you in a child that they actually made the effort to find something, not just to throw a bunch of toys at you and say go play, but to actually invest in you and to sit there for hours with you. How many people watching have sat there for hours with your kids or your nephews and nieces and colored with them? That's going to mean something to them one day when they look back and they know that that's not actually what you wanted to be doing, but you did it because you love them. And then to focus on that where there was so much dysregulation, there was a few people, you can always find a few people that were regulated. 
and that we're we're there to to protect you and to 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 not only protect you but to invest in you by paying attention to you as a child and paying attention to to your personality and 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 instead of getting mad at you for not liking what your cousins or your siblings like actually going out and saying i, I think i think she'll like this i've watched her i think this is going to get her curious mind and she worked because i sat there forever playing clue you know actually in the seventh grade my little girlfriends and i we dressed up for Halloween as all of the characters from the game of Clue. We had our own weapons. <laughs> and one of our friends was the dice. <laughs> and we won, we won the Halloween costume that year. <laughs> so, so I saw my friend in her dice, her cardboard box, like walking in the parade with the, her hands hanging out at the, at the court with the, as the dice. <laughs> but, um, but I know, ladies, we're coming up at, at an hour. Um, can we talk about what's going on with you? I know, Holly, you've got some new... Um, some new stuff going on with your healing services, correct? I do. Um, I mentioned a little, and, and this was divinely orchestrated by my galactic queen bee self. I didn't know I even had. <laughs> she she came in and uh, through that interaction and all the puzzle pieces that followed afterwards was uh, the, the formation of the... Um, B4 Federation, which is a Ascension support group. It's it's uh, gonna it's already started. The I use the Signal app, and I'm there watching and responding. You know, practically twenty four seven, and uh, I'm building a soul community, and everybody in it uh, so far um, is soul family. And they are, I'm promoting them to, all of us have something to teach. And um, it, it's truly a, a, this beautiful non-judgmental support group that uh, they participate in. You know, they're good days, they're bad days. Oh my gosh, I just experienced this. What does that mean? And so um, I'm always there. And it's, and then I do a bi-monthly um, Skype call so the group members can get to know each other and talk with each other face-to-face. -face. And we teach, we heal, we anything that's that's needed. So you have me there for, for um, about two hours each time. And it's only like $33. $33 and you get me for, you know, four hours plus a month plus the, you know, 24 hours, seven, 24 seven <laughs> support group on um, signal. And then at some point I'm going to have a little pen made. And so any of the support group, wherever you are, when you get your pen, you wear it whenever you're out and about. Whenever you see that on someone else, you know you're going to have instant family. That's instant family. That's your calling card. And so, I mean, it's going to be global. And um, I don't have the pins yet, but they're coming. It'll be the, the emblem, the logo on my website, basically. And then also a part of that, I'm going to take part of those fees in a different account. And I'm uh, when enough gets in there, I'm going to start a philanthropic part because there's I want to help particularly women. You know, sometimes a couple hundred can make all the difference. You know, you want to start your business or you're just this far away, just this far away. I want to have that philanthropic part, and uh, so far the it they're loving it. They're just loving it. I remember our first get together was four hours long, and nobody wanted to leave. It was such beautiful agape love there, and so I'm really excited about that. And uh, that's on the website, and then um, of course the the psychic uncoupling. That's your help with your narcissistic, uh, getting rid of the narcissistic um, energy cords. And, and I do have to say, I am not 
I'm not a guru. I don't do your soul work for you. I clear the path for you to do your work. I support your work. That's I'm my expertise is clearing on all levels everywhere. Um, but, but the other, the big one that I was also a message, there's, there's other things available there too, of course, but, uh, the other big one that, that a being, a version of me came and literally spoke to me audibly sentence by sentence until I wrote it down was, um, my eight week VIP intensive working with me one-on-one for eight weeks to literally change who you are. You will not come up at the end um, after eight weeks. And that's called Renaissance. A new birth, a new beginning. So I'm excited about those and all the other stuff, but, but particularly the support group, because that, that has already started changing, uh, helping people change and and the camaraderie between um the other soul family members has just been blossoming beautifully and there's been a lot of growth a lot of healing and a ton of activations i I do truly getting to know who they are what what's their purpose and and uh their soul origins and so it's been really good been really good and i'm super excited and i know there's more coming um this one i don't even i don't even haven't even put it together but i literally was sitting at my desk here and i something zoomed in (laughs) my left ear and said you are going to create this cosmic shaman light language hypnosis program and i'm like what? Do I know how to do that? They're like, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so I'm not there yet, but uh, that's that's not even started yet. But it, just things like that, you know. I've literally had uh, parts of me that I've never met before in this human form. That lit- you know that. <clears throat> I literally come and snatch my consciousness out and do the activation, do the, like I had my light body uh, self. Some, I don't know if you guys have experienced those forced naps, like one minute you're good and the next moment you barely can fall into bed forced yeah. because there's something needs to do. And she grabbed me out by my left wrist and then she's like in between and she calls down this golden cord from source. I'm hanging off her other hand with my, you know, my left wrist. And she says this prayer, this prayer of surrender to, to the, the will of creator. And it was so life changing. I literally flew out of bed, not the same person that fell in. And, and this kind of stuff is happening. I know not for just for me, but for for others. And it's just it's going to come faster and stronger. And, and just be prepared, and willing, and grateful because <laughs> it's it's coming. <laughs> I have to tell you, Holly, and I don't know if this will resonate as me speaking. Then when when you said Renaissance, then when I experienced right before we started filming. I was preparing my show for Monday with Aquarius Rising Africa. And it has to do with Henry the Fourth and his missing head, all that fun stuff. And but I was listening to a podcast. I was listening to somebody. I'd already finished my research, but I was just refining some things, listening some to some more people speak. And I was at my closet hanging clothes up, and this guy mentioned something in the podcast about his birth being at the end of the Renaissance, and he started talking about the Renaissance. And we all know the Renaissance. We all know what that is. But for some reason, it like sent it spent it, it sent a, a shiver down my spine, like the re reinv- and I didn't even add it to my notes because in my head I'm like, well, that doesn't really need to be presented on the show. But listen, I got it. And the, and then I was like, why did I even like like why did that even resonate to me? Because I you know I'm a history buff. The Renaissance, no big deal. But then when you said that, I was like, oh, it's because I was about this film with Holly, and it wasn't about 
the Italian Renaissance, the Europe, it, it was about the Renaissance that's happening, the rebirth of you as a person. And so will you, Holly, will you send me, um, when we get off, will you send me the links to everything so I can put it in the, the, the description box for our viewers so they have easy access to your services and the signal groups and all that kind of stuff? Yep, it's all on the website. Perfect. We did, just, perfect. Send me the website and I'll make sure we have the correct one. And so you guys can go and navigate it. And I will say too, because our everybody on this channel loves Tamara and Holly, you and Tamara have done some some stuff together too. So this is pretty cool because yeah. she's she's been doing this for a very long time. And so the fact that they're working together a lot, guys, is pretty, pretty special. Well, it Emmy, is. she's it, amazing. It, it is. We, we're so, how many badass women? This is like the re, the reemergence of the divine feminine too, because we look at this great awakening and there's some really cool men too, but there's a lot of women. There's a lot of women that are taking their power back. We're just yep. the witches you couldn't burn. No, <laughs> um, Emmy, what's going on with you, girl? I know you said you're not advertising your services, but you'll still do services for people. Um, if they request, is there anything else going on that you want to tell the audience about? Nothing new. Um, if you would like a Reiki session, just email me. I'm still working through email. I like doing things personally. Um, I am, I am working on listening to what God wants me to have as far as services for my business and also too guys in one year's time my husband has built a business from the ground up and he has two full-time employees and he is paying each of them more money than he was making one year ago and guys if you haven't tried the catalyst journal yet what are you waiting for? I'm telling you what. I'm telling you what. The only work you need to do to increase your finances is inner work. That's it. it I mean, it is a lot. There is a whole nother set of stress and catalyst and challenge when you are working for yourself and being the sole provider for two other families, like that is freaking heavy. In in the worst recession known to human history, I, I really have to stop myself and count my blessings because as busy as it is and as hard as it is and as stressful as it is, it is an absolute miracle, an absolute miracle that my husband and I have been able to scratch and crawl, crawl our way out of poverty and addiction and abuse and build what we have built in one year's time. It's like, what? So yeah, I'm still doing Reiki. I'm, I'm still, I'm still a busy mom homeschooling and I'm the wife of a uh, couple million dollar insured business. For my husband. <laughs> I mean, we have fleet vehicles. One of them's in the shop and we got to pay $3,500 to repair two of the injectors. It's like a year ago, $3,500 would have been $3.5 I would have been like, oh, it's free. And now it's like writing a check, writing a check. It's so weird. It's so weird. It's so well, weird. That too, you bring up a good point before we close out is trauma doesn't necessarily have to be bad stuff that happens sometimes when good things happen you have the same ner nervousness system response um and and marnie alton's actually talked about that in some of her her bar classes too that we often think of it as being all bad but sometimes mm. if your life changes like that even though it's what you want it it, it still will affect because there's a new there again it's the devil you don't know is better yeah. than the devil or the devil you know is better than the devil you don't know. It's a new, it's a new. And so give yourself that. I know a lot of people have something good happen. They're like, why am I so stressed? It's okay. It's it's adapting to, I hate the word a new normal. I think they really outplayed that. But it is a new normal. And it's it's finding that new patterning. And that's okay. And it's okay to feel a little bit of stress. It's okay, right, Emmy, to feel a little bit of panic. It's okay to feel okay. a little bit of nervousness. That is normal. And it's, to and it is, that is 
that I mean, I have my own business, but it's just me. <laughs> you know, like it's when you start to employ other people there, that is a heightened responsibility. And thank God, though, those employees have people like you who are running the business because there's empathy there that, that you care. You actually care about them as humans and not everybody wants to work for somebody who gives a shit about them they're just not just bodies filling a job but they get to know them get to know their spouses their children that's what the beauty of a small business is is it does become a family you know it's it's um and so that's your so thank god your your employees are so blessed to have someone like you emmy as the wife of the boss who actually cares and wants to make sure that this is maintainable not just for your family but for their families too you know and that's that's they everyone should be so lucky as to have a boss like that so you know, it's all okay, guys. It's all good. It's all, um, you know, as, as Tamara has said to me before in her funny Australian way, we as souls in the ether, we must have been real bored. <laughs> <laughs> I just see us sitting on a fence. I was walking. shaking her head. She's like, oh my God. She, swinging our legs on the fence in the heavens going, it's boring up here. We should go check out what's happening on, on, on earth. Earth looks fun. <laughs> <laughs> and oh here we are so you know but that's uh you know the emerald tablets that's what thought says that's one of the biggest things i took away from the emerald tablets which was so without that really blew my mind was this concept that when we're in these bodies when we're just in soul form we don't know life because when we're just in our soul form we don't know death but we're in these bodies these mortal bodies we're given we're given this friction because we are mortal and because we understand death in these bodies that's where we have the chance to live to understand our life and how beautiful is that it's the bad that shines a light on the good it's the sorrow that shines a light on the joy and without the opposing forces none would exist so so you guys, is there anything else you want to say before closing, ladies? Of course, I'll have everybody's links in the description box, all that good stuff. It's just going to be down there, guys. You just got to hit the arrow button and it'll pop up and show you everything. Um, but anything else you guys want to say before you ladies want to say before we we head out? I can't think of anything. I'm just been so, been so blessed so to know nice. you both. Oh, sorry, Holly. <laughs> I'm, I'm so gonna... blessed to know you both to be here to co-create with you. I'll ask you girls one question before we leave. Holly, tomorrow, we're filming this on Friday. Tomorrow is Saturday. What does your little girl inside you want to do on a Saturday tomorrow? Play in the forest. To be outside and to connect with the elementals and the animals. And in the beginning, we're everyone lived together in peace and harmony and played like completely peers you know there were no predators that and they're starting to come it's starting to be that way the more i'm outside and i and i have to say really quick I'll, <laughs> i'm so lucky to have discovered a tree circle right in my backyard and there's an upflow vortex in the middle of it. So we made like a little patio out there and lights. And I've already had animals come up and um, slugs come out of nowhere and end up on my lap. And a fairy <laughs> theme and just all kinds of really cool stuff. <clears throat> so that's a really great way. If anybody, wherever you live, look for a natural tree circle. They will grow in a circle. And the chances are the center of them, there is an energy uh, vortex that will assist you on your soul journey and your soul evolution. Thanks for pointing that out, Holly. I think that's something that's a very practical thing for people to look for because you're right. They're they're. If you don't know what you're looking for, you might not see it. But yeah, there's a lot of them. Yeah. And I'm just waiting for you to when, use them. When you're in it, it completely changes your frequency. Yeah. That's why the animals come up. They don't see you as a threat. You feel like one of them. It, that's how much it changes your frequency when you're in there. The that's birds, you name so every, it. 
So tomorrow, everybody watching on Saturday, go outside wherever you live in the world, go in your backyard, see if you can find one because they're 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 not in, they're they're pretty they're they're a lot you can find them. Yeah, um, they do exist. Mm -hmm. So yeah, blessed places they truly are, and they'll help you a lot, heal and ground and whatever it is you need. Just they're they're there. They're they're Gaia's gift to us. And the tree, the tree collective and the mycelium network, they also connected with me uh, to let me know they work in unison and, and they're there to help us. That's awesome. Well, Emmy, what about you? Tomorrow, Saturday, what does little Emmy want to do tomorrow? Oh, I'm totally putting all the leaves in my yard on the trampoline and jumping on it. <laughs> I are I already put like I already put like like two or three garbage bags full of leaves trampoline. <laughs> that is all I do that is something I'm very excited as playing in the leaves. That that is fun. That what is are you gonna do, Bryce? I don't know. You know, it's so hard. I wish I had some rollerblades. I was Go actually get thinking, some. I know. I was actually thinking, um, as Holly was saying that we, you know, we live right off of Piedmont Park, which is not doxing myself, guys. There's like a million people that live around Piedmont Park, but Pied half of Piedmont Park is a forest. And when you go deep into it, it's in the middle of the city, but you can't see any of the skyscrapers. So I might go back there tomorrow and see if I could, because I used to, my sister and I used to climb trees a lot when we were kids. And I remember we had a big magnolia tree in the front yard, which was the easiest type of tree to climb because the branches come all the way. So it's like, a, you just, it's just like a stair. You just walk up. And the day I stopped climbing trees, we were in that, mag and it acts like a tent. For those who don't know what a magnolia tree is, it's almost like a tent. And it's the beautiful, the, sm the magnolia flowers just smell beautiful. But we were inside, and a bird had fallen out of its nest and was dead on the ground. And I, it broke my heart so much to see that dead bird. I never went back in that magnolia tree again. Um, that was kind of a death of innocence in a little ways, but I might, you know, I don't know if I'm allowed to climb the trees at, at Piedmont Park. They might think I'm on something, <laughs> um, which a lot of people are on something at Piedmont Park, but, but, you know, just to go back into the woods again and, you know, have that curiosity that, that children have when they're in the woods, they don't, children don't see the dangers. You know, we had to learn rhymes about the poisonous snakes when I was a kid, but that didn't stop us. We still, that didn't stop our parents from sending us out in the woods, you know, to play and explore and see what other worlds awaited us in, in the forest. So, well, I would love to hear from our audience. If you're watching right now, whatever day of the week you end up watching this, this will be loaded up probably tomorrow morning, Saturday morning. But even if you watch this on Sunday or Monday, let me know in your next day off, your next day where you can just go on a day date with your younger self what is your what is a little girl and you want to do tomorrow morning? It might just be getting up and watching cartoons. Who knows? But whatever it is, I forgot that. Yeah. <laughs> frosted <laughs> flakes. We would get we would get frosted flakes on Saturday mornings and we would watch cartoons. Yep, I used to do that with my son. That was our. He'd get uh, hot tea or hot cocoa. I'd have my coffee and we'd be snuggled under the blanket. He'd be under my arm. And we would watch cartoons together for as long as I could make that last. It was just <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I forgot about cartoons. Yeah. You know, maybe this is just another challenge on top of that challenge. Maybe the day that you give to your, your younger self, leave your cell phone at home. Because when we were kids, we didn't have cell phones. That's right. We didn't have the internet to distract us. That's why we watch cartoons. That's why I love people are showing these pictures of back in the 80s and 90s when we would eat cereal in the morning because we didn't have cell phones to look at. We always read the back of the boxes because there was like riddles on the backs of the box for kids. And you could draw those little like puzzles you could draw and stuff because so you see pictures of kids reading the back of the of the, bo the cereal box. Maybe do that tomorrow with your kids. Take their phones away and make them look at the back of that Frosted Flakes box and see what's it i mean they play they games yeah play games. games yep mm -hmm. yep all right you guys well thank you so much i'm so honored to know both of you as well and i'm so grateful that you came on today and we're open and as emmy says vulnerable with our friends watching right now and i hope that for those watching if you're new to the channel welcome if you've been around for a while welcome um i hope that that resonated with you guys and maybe if anything i hope that you guys don't feel so alone 
Um, and you know, humaning is hard. It's I, I like to say humaning as a verb instead of a noun. That you know, the noun is our soul, right? The the human is the activity that we're doing right now. And so it's a simulated experience for us to learn and grow and refine our own souls. So um, I hope that that yeah, that you guys are having a wonderful day. And I cannot wait to hear what our friends watching what they what they want to do, what their little girls or little boys inside of them want to do um, for fun to play, you know? So, all right, ladies. Well, again, everybody, both Holly and Emmy's channel links will be down in the description box below, as well as their links to their website so that you guys can get more information um, and, and, and reach out to Holly and Emmy if you would like to um, partake in some of their services or join the signal groups, all that kind of stuff. So, all right. We will talk to you all soon. Bye, everybody.